Aziz, Philippe, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Um, shall we wait? But I think it's fine. Now we've been waiting already for three, four minutes. Um, good morning. Good morning. Well, dear friends of Medports and MedCruz, wish you all a good morning. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome you all to our third webinar, jointly organized by MedCruz and MedPorts. Well, it's been a while since our last gathering, and I'm very glad to see you all again on this opportunity. Um, Philip. Thank you, Aziz. Good morning, uh, everybody. It's a pleasure to, to see you uh, very numerous uh, this morning, and uh, it's uh, a pleasure to moderate with uh, my friend is this third uh, webinar uh the last one of the of the good series and uh so uh we we can uh, start uh, uh i think uh, uh now uh, and uh, we can go now. yeah thank you philip it's it's my pleasure co-moderating these webinars with you um before we start let me kindly refresh our memories on the webinars we had so far um, so on our first webinar back in March, it started with discussing the impact of the COVID-19 on cruise ports, ferry ports, and cargo ports. And then on our second webinar back in June, um, another discussion was successfully held on the main challenges and implementations of the new protocols, tools, and legislations. And today at our third webinar, um, we will put again an important topic under the spotlight and listen to opportunities and adjustments generated out of the COVID-19 crisis. Um, for those who don't know me or don't remember me, my name is Aziz Günger. I'm the board member at Matt Cruz and serve as the director for corporations with other associations. And I also serve as the regional director for East Matt Ports of Global Ports Holding and as the general manager for Kusha the Cruise Port. And um, well, friends, um, as I mentioned before, today we are going to listen to different opportunities and adjustments generated out of this COVID-19 crisis by different stakeholders of the cruise industry. And as it was the case with the COVID-19 crisis, well, crisis can be really dangerous, expensive, and totally detracting from other agendas and priorities. Um, however, I mean, a look back in history illustrates that crisis and extreme threats can be useful for directing individuals, industries, countries, and even the whole world to a solution. Out of crisis can emerge new and incredible opportunities, particularly if traditional approaches and paradigms are questioned and challenged. Um, a crisis can change incentives and motivations, potentially leading to new cooperations behaviors and even to creation of new systems and structures. And crisis can get a collective adrenaline flowing, focusing minds to solve the problem at all hand. As always, we have very distinguished and respectable speakers today to discuss this topic, and all of them are among the best in their fields. And I think um, all of us will agree that during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, at least for myself, the lexical meaning of turning challenges into opportunities is MSC Cruises. Um, our webinar will start with a very well-known and well-loved speaker, um, Elisabetta Denardo, the Vice President of the Port Development Division of MSC Cruises. Since September 2018, Elisabetta Denardo serves as the VP for Port Development at MSC Cruises. Elisabetta has a key role in establishment and development strategic partnership with global cruise port community. Elisabetta joined the cruise industry back in 2007, having first worked in, in the cargo shipping business and served as a director for operations. Ever since, she has worked for Costa Crociere or Costa Cruises and then for Silver Sea Cruises, where she was holding the vice president position for port and destinations operations. Elisabetta has a university degree in shipping and maritime economics and a London accredited master in cargo marine surveying. I mean, let's face it. I mean, she's a real celebrity of the cruise industry and I'm very honored and happy to host her today in our webinar. 
so thanks to dear Elisabetta for accepting our invitation and sharing um, your valuable experiences with us. And uh, well, I'd like to leave the floor to you, Elisabetta. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Aziz, thanks, Philip. Thanks uh, to all the speakers and my crew for organizing this webinar. Um, you, you introduced me too highly sounding because, uh, of course, any title or study doesn't make the experience that we have. The experience that we have is uh, thanks to the partners that taught me a lot in my time in the cruise industry. So thanks to the ports, the port agents, the tour operators, and everybody else. Um, today we're here to talk about opportunities. After a year and a half of terrible challenges, and high, high cost of operations, we would like to give a positive message to everybody in the audience, um, whoever uh, is there and uh, wherever they come from. So the, the opportunities that we discovered uh, during this year and a half, and especially during the sum second summer of operations, because if you remember, we started in MSC uh, on the 16th of August, 2020, but with a certain um, very strict protocol, of course. Um, so I would like to talk about the first timers that we had this summer and this year 2021 and the incredible experience and terrific job that has been done not only by msc cruises but also by the local communities we work with uh, one of the ports that i want to mention today and i will mention few because i think it's good to 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 give credit to this port one of the sports is Taranto. That was a first timer for us. We have Christina today with us today, not only because of the incredible work of the port in putting together everyone, every local stakeholders, but for the great synergy they work uh, together with us with um, from the uh, Board of Tourists, the Port Authority, of course, all our partners on site, even down to the level of the smallest detail of operation, it was completely aimed to make it work. Like they saw all the local stakeholders, they saw an opportunity, they worked to make it work and they really worked to make sure that um, we, they could fulfill our requests, not only in terms of COVID protocols, but also in terms of new requests. For example, in Toronto, we have private beaches partners and three of them joined efforts to, to guarantee sort of private beach experience to our guests in the summer. So thanks to, to not only to Christina, but all to all the partners locally. We had another first timer, which was Syracuse, uh, where again, uh, to just to mention an example, we had peak um, embarkations that we never could imagine in Sicily, from Sicily, not only because of the Sicilians boarding from Syracuse, but because Syracuse and Catania Airport did a good, good job for connections. I guess, low cost connections um, for, for airlift. So that's super, super important. Let's not, take, let's not forget the super job done by the airport. We were in Marseille, the first cruise line restarting when France was still closed. We had an incredible support from the prefecture in Marseille and all France. Uh, the prefecture in France is the authority that's um, course, um, allowing or not the restart of cruising in this COVID times. And, um, we had a great attention from them. Authorities even went to Genoa to see the operation, how Grandiosa was working. Uh, they saw the protocol, they saw with their eyes that they could touch uh, really the product and the protocol and the experience. And they decided to give us their trust. They believed in us and they made it work. Um, by the way, we also had uh, through this operation in Marseille, we also managed to push a little bit on trains and flights, of course. So that's why I'm talking about all oh, these connections. I'm trying to be quick as this because we want to leave more time to the others. We were the first ones on the sea cruises starting the summer, early summer with UK domestic uh, trips. And we had again some first timers. First of all, we never had domestic uh, cruises in UK. We called Portland for the first time. Incredible job done by Ian uh, McCade and his partners as stakeholders uh, to, to welcome us in Portland. We had the first time a turnaround in Greenock that we would have never imagined to do otherwise with peak embarkation disembarkation of 500 packs in and 500 packs out on a, on a peak call midsummer, which was also a, a first timer. 
for us and probably for Greenock ever because they never have managed turnarounds in Greenock in Scotland. So connecting also Northern uh, Ireland, Scotland and England with an amazing uh, itinerary that worked very well, of course, with Liverpool and Southampton. We had, even in a time where we had positive cases on board, because we did have positive cases on board all along this year and a half, we know, uh, despite the universal testing, despite a PCR, despite a vaccine, COVID is still there. So our protocol was such a war machine, I want to define it like this, that once the, the, the social media in UK were talking bad about some positive cases on a cruise ship, and it was our, Emma Retrosa, even the local authorities took our side in managing communications, making understand to the local communities and the social media posters uh, that we were managing very well our protocol. And then finally, I would say we had also the opportunity to start three months earlier in July versus November, our Red Sea uh, cruises from uh, Saudi Arabia with uh, only um, Saudis guests. So that was also a mega opportunity for us. Sorry, I was a little bit long, but I think it's good to mention the examples so that other ports can really understand Spain, Italy, France, uh, and uh, in winter we'll soon start with uh, winter cruising for the first time from North Europe. They all did a great job. We still have, of course, to fine tune. Europe is a big family, but each one has an interpretation of certain regulations. So that's why it's super important to engage with each um, local authority and stakeholder to give them the right comfort about the protocol. But we're getting there. Amazing opportunities, as is. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, well, um, as I told you, I mean, uh, it was a year for MSC, I mean, the pandemic. Uh, turning a challenge into an opportunity. I mean, again, I have to say that the lexical meaning is MSC cruises that we have all seen. Um, and I, from, from, from what you explained, my keynote would be, I mean, the real opportunity uh, was, I mean, itself was the early reopening, let's say, for the industry. And we have encouraged so many cruise lines. And, um, and it was not an the easy task, we know that. And I have just uh, read an article at, at the Times Magazine where Mr. Vago was uh, explaining all this uh, journey and it was really very efficient work. And we have to just applaud all the MSC team for all what they did. And um, all these forcing conditions uh, brought the industry new opportunities. I mean, you came up with new itineraries, with new ports and with new operations. So that, that was exactly what we wanted to listen from you. I mean, uh, hearing about these new itineraries, this, this new products, new ships, new destinations, new ports. Uh, I mean, a, a crisis couldn't be better turned into opportunity, let's say. And uh, thank you for explaining that in a very efficient way. Um, and uh, Philip, uh, I'd like to leave the floor to you to introduce our next very valuable and respected speakers. I think we can continue with Christina as Elisabetta was already underlining uh, the success of Port of Toronto. Uh, and uh, well, it's, it's so obvious that um, all the stakeholders have to collaborate in a very efficient way. Uh, it, otherwise, I mean, it, it doesn't work. We have all seen that from port authorities to port operators, terminal operated, operators, tour operators, I mean, all the stakeholders, the local authorities, they have to be a player in this in this game, in these difficult days. And uh, it was okay. so nice to hear that Taranto was a, a, a successful example. Philip, please. Okay, this few uh, to give me uh, the opportunity to uh, to make the introduction of. Uh, Christina, for this webinar, I have the pleasure to be uh, so one month ago, and uh, Christina is a perfect host for uh, visiting the port and to well understand the, the fantastic development of the port of Taranto and uh, the positive and the optimistic future and how they see uh, uh, the development of uh, of the cruise now. Uh, so it's a pleasure for me and uh, for the Met uh, Port Association. Um, to, to have Christina as a speaker for this uh, webinar. Christina Carrier uh, has been working for the promotion and marketing of the port of Taranto since 2012. 
Uh, she takes care of relationships with cruise lines since 2014 and participates in international exhibition and uh, networking events in the fields of Bragberg, container transport and cruises on behalf of PNIES, uh, the port of Taranto. Uh, collaborates with Med Cruise and CLIA and as well with uh, Medport Association. So, Christina, uh, thank you to be here. I say my greetings to all my friends in Toronto for me, and uh, I, I let you the floor. And uh, to, and uh, I'm very impatient to know uh, and to, uh, to listen again uh, your uh, uh, your perspective for the future and to get a ride of uh, of this pandemic. Thank you, Christina. Thank you so much, Philip, for your wonderful introduction. And uh, thanks a lot to Isabetta. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure to, to work with uh, MSC this year. Um, and uh, of course, you introduced the, um, the work from uh, the side of the cruise line uh, for the restart of, uh, at least for the, rest, for the introduction of new ports and for the whole uh, all the start of the cruise, uh, uh, cruise traffic this year. I will uh, talk to you about the work from the port authority side. And uh, I would like to thank you, Anya, for uh, starting the presentation. Okay, so um, this I uh, will talk to you about uh, how we, uh, how the, we as a port authority, um, try to find new ways to generate opportunities in the cruise sector uh, throughout the 2020 and 2021. Next slide. Uh, the Port of Taranto is a newcomer, of course, in the cruise industry. Uh, we have been members of uh, uh, MedCruise uh, uh, since uh, 2014 and uh, members of MedPorts uh, since 2018. Um, and we became a cruise destination only in uh, 2017. Um, and uh, uh, of course, with uh, the pandemic, uh, um, the Port of Taranto uh, was uh, uh, the calendar, the cruise calendar of the Port of Taranto was cancelled as uh, happened in many other ports all over the world. And uh, um, this crisis could have halted our uh, growth as a cruise destination, but uh, uh, this did not, did not stop us, did not stop our, our uh, work, and uh, it did not stop us from uh, finding uh, new ways to um, reap opportunities, to generate opportunities uh, for the growth of Taranto as a cruise destination. And uh, um, in particular, we identified three steps uh, to bring about growth in, this, uh, in the cruise sector, um, which were um, reactivate, revamp, and uh, restart. Reactivate the relationship with uh, uh, the local community and with our international partners, revamp the port infrastructure, and restart cruise traffic. Let, next slide, please. The first step was to reactivate the relationship with the cruise lines. Of course, 2020 as the first year of a pandemic was a, a, an especially an extraordinary year. It was a, a especially difficult year for, for cruise lines. And uh, the Port of Taranto offered support in terms of a layup of uh, cruise ships. First, uh, in the first month of uh, 2020, we hosted the Costa Favolosa. And uh, in the next month, uh, we had the, uh, both MSC and uh, Fantasia and Opera uh, berthing at Taranto. They were in layup. And uh, uh, thanks to the collaboration of uh, local institutions and uh, uh, the PR concessionaire, we uh, offered the uh, services for uh, cruise ships uh, in layup in Taranto. Um, and in particular, uh, we allowed the cruise ships to berth uh, both at a safe distance from the community um, and the distance that could guarantee uh, the necessary health-related services to the crew. So the operations were carried out in total safety. Next slide, please. 
of course, uh, thanks to the support of uh, both associations, Medcruise and uh, Medports, uh, we maintained our international relations. We participated, we attended the conference meetings of uh, Medports all through throughout uh, 2020 and 2021. So we could uh, uh, maintain our network of international relations. And uh, as Philip mentioned, we uh, also were able to organize um, the uh, visit of uh, uh, this team, the Medports representatives in Taranto. Uh, at the same time, we maintain the relationships with uh, uh, the cruise lines, thanks to MedCruise, uh, which organized uh, activities related to uh, networking, um, of course, the virtual general assembly, and uh, of, uh, as well the marketing campaign to give up to the cruise industry. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I mean, at the meantime, we launched the, the Destination Make project, uh, which uh, aimed at uh, um, creating a new marketing strategy for Taranto as a cruise destination with the help of uh, the Destination Makers uh, uh, Tourism Marketing Agency. Uh, the project uh, was carried out uh, virtually, of course, uh, during uh, 2020 and 2021, and we involved the local community in uh, the uh, drafting of uh, the, this new strategy and the uh, cruise lines as well. We had the pleasure to involve, uh, of course, Elisabetta in, uh, the, in our online meetings. Um, and the uh, new marketing strategy was uh, presented in February 2020. Uh, 2021, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in the framework of our uh, the strategy of reactivation of uh, uh, relationships with the local community, uh, we joined uh, AIVP. Uh, AIVP is uh, uh, the association of uh, ports and cities all over the world, and uh, uh, it offered us uh, support in our strategy to regenerate the relationship with, uh, with the city, uh, which is an important step uh, for, uh, for our port. It is an important objective. And, uh, Next slide, please. Um, in, the, in the framework of our strategy of regeneration of a partnership with the city, we organized the Taranto Port Days, uh, both in 2020 and 2021. Uh, the Taranto Port Days uh, uh, are part of the initiative launched by the Italian Ports Association, um, the, uh, the initiative of the Italian Port Days, uh, with the aim to open port life and culture to people. Uh, so we organized the first the Taranto Port Days in the port area in 2020, um, three days of uh, events that involved the local community with port visits, uh, concerts, uh, events, and as you can see, uh, with the first edition of the Falanto Awards, uh, which were a, a ceremony to celebrate the growth of uh, Taranto as a cruise destination. And the first award was given to Marella Cruises. Next slide, please. The event, uh, the Sonata Port Days event took place this year too. And we had the pleasure, as uh, Philip mentioned, to have uh, uh, Medports representatives as uh, uh, our esteemed guests. Uh, thank, thanks to Philip, uh, Stefano and Ala for uh, being with us and for uh, uh, starting the, thank you. Thank you so much, Stefano, for your enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, for, start, for starting the, uh, live, the Medports live events again in time. Uh, so we host, the, uh, as I said, uh, many concerts and visits for the city, and as well the launch of the uh, Open Port Exhibition Center with the support of uh, AIVP. Next slide, please. Okay, um, the second step in our uh, strategy is, uh, of course, the revamp of port infrastructure. Uh, the works under were um, undergoing all throughout uh, 2020 uh, for um, the revamping of P1, which is the birthing point for cruise ships closest to the city. Um, it was uh, inaugurated in 2020, in June 2020, and it was also the area in the port where the Toronto Port Days took place this year. Um, the uh, another betting point which was made available again in uh, 2020 was uh, Pier 1, the head of Pier 1. 
um, for cruiser-related workings. And uh, uh, this year, works are uh, currently undergoing on the um, east, on the west side of uh, Pier One, uh, which is the opposite side where the uh, MSCC side is currently birthing at. Today, we have the pleasure to uh, to welcome the MSC side. It is the uh, the Wednesday is the uh, the day of for the for the call of the seaside in Taranto. Um, and as you can see, works are currently undergoing, uh, and uh, there are also works undergoing for the construction of a, of the Falanto Port Service Center, which will host the new cruise terminal and the uh, open port exhibition center as well. Next slide, please. Um, the final and uh, um, uh, most important step is the restart of cruise traffic, uh, in the meaning, meaning that uh, we never stopped working for uh, and looking to the future uh, for the restart of cruise traffic. Uh, all throughout 2020, uh, we worked to fi finalize the, the administrative procedure um, for the concession of uh, passenger related services to Global Port Holding. And finally, in uh, May 2021, we uh, undersigned the concession with uh, Global Ports and uh, uh, the uh, Global Ports, we were part finally of the international network of Global Ports Holding, uh, which launched the Taranto as uh, with the slogan, a destination beyond your imagination. And uh, next slide, please. The terminal uh, was set up in record time, uh, thanks to Talent to Port uh, and uh, the new terminal operator, uh, part of the Global Ports Holding Network. And uh, uh, operation started in uh, May 2021 with the maiden call of MSCC side. It was uh, uh, an extraordinary year for us this 2021 because uh, we uh, served for the first time as a home port. Uh, Talent to served for the first time as on port for uh, passengers embarking and disembarking from the seaside. And it was also an extraordinary time because uh, uh, we implemented the uh, necessary measures for uh, the shelter of passengers and for uh, for um, for the health of passengers with the help of MSC with the safe bubble protocol. Uh, next slide, please. A few numbers. This year was a record year for uh, many reasons. Uh, as I mentioned, we were uh, acting as the first time ever for as a uh, home port, uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, 545 passengers embarking from Taranto on a record day in August. Uh, for as uh, for the um, short excursions, uh, the record day uh, we had uh, 60 seven Shorex buses leaving the pier, the first pier of uh, the port, uh, with passengers uh, going on their discovery of Taranto as a cruise destination. And uh, the success of Taranto as a cruise destination was uh, so great that uh, we entered officially the uh, top 10 ports in Italy, the top 10 cruise ports in Italy, uh, according to the forecast of uh, Risposte Turismo, the, research, uh, the tourism research agency of Risposte Turismo. Next slide, please. So we can conclude our presentation saying that uh, we could uh, uh, generate opportunities during this time of, uh, of um, crisis all over the world. Uh, thanks to um, our uh, the consolidation of our partnerships, so uh, international partnerships, uh, our consolidation of uh, the relationship with the local community and uh, our activity to raise ecosystem awareness in, the, in Taranto as a destination. Uh, thanks to our activity of uh, revamping the cruise infrastructure, we were able to uh, establish a solid partnership with uh, Global Ports Holding and uh, also with, uh, of course, MSC Cruises. And uh, with, uh, we were able, uh, finally, to bring about traffic growth in uh, 2021. And uh, we had five new cruise lines uh, uh, to our client portfolio in uh, 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Christina, for this uh, very uh, 
interesting presentation. Uh, I hope you you can hear me because my connection is not so good as I said, it's not so stable. Uh, thank you again, Christina. I have to say that uh, when I was in uh, in Toronto, I was. Uh, very impressed by the enthusiasm and uh, the willingness of the Toronto Port team to, to recover and to imagine a positive future for the port sector in general, but and uh, for the cruise sector uh, in particular. And uh, what is uh, interesting in Toronto is that they want to um, to, 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 to imagine as uh, the future of the cruise activity by drawing the lesson from the past. And uh, it is very interesting for that. And uh, I hope that you, you will have some uh, question to ask to, uh, to Christina. And I have to say, to, to conclude just my, my little moderation, to say that uh, Toronto City uh, deserves uh, to be uh, visited. It's uh, a nice city. Uh, I know that uh, it is uh, not so, so known, but uh, it deserves to be visited. Uh, as well, it's countryside. So thank you again, Christina. Uh, now, you. Uh, Aziz, maybe you have some comments. Uh, thank you, Philip. Yes. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Christina, for this excellent presentation. I mean, I, I never believe in chance. I mean, and opportunities doesn't appear by chance. So um, uh, it, it's so clear that crystal clear that the success, uh, what you have done all in 20 and 21, uh, it's it's a result of hard working. I mean, looking at what you did, I mean, it, from marketing to collaboration with industry stakeholders, from uh, from inf infrastructure, from from operational enhancement, everything. I mean, that that brings the opportunity. Otherwise, we cannot just wait and expect a good expect the crisis turn into an opportunity. There is this is no way possible. And uh, well, working for GPH for 15 years, I have to say, um, uh, we're so happy to have the privilege to support the operations at Taranto because I mean, uh, well, it, Taranto was a hidden uh, gem for the cruise industry, but not anymore. It's been discovered by the industry and uh, the, the future is very bright, I have to say. And uh, I wish you just utmost success there and uh, hope to have a good collaboration in, in, from now on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aziz. Uh, I think that we will have a Q&A session after, after the, all the presentation. Huh? Yeah, it is expected to be like this. So time is to, uh, is to, uh, to, to introduce Jean-François Suas now for uh, his presentation. Uh, it's quite difficult to, to present uh, Mr. Suas because he, he has a long uh, career uh, in, uh, in the maritime sector and uh, he made a lot of things and uh, is very involved uh, in, the, in the cruise sector. So uh, I'm going to make uh, to make it in a, in a nutshell and very shortly. But I have to say that Jean-François Chavez is president of the Marseille Provence Cruise Club, uh, president as well of the Development Council of the Port of Marseille. He's graduated from the French Maritime Academy and uh, he was elected uh, uh, for the Marseille Provence Cruise Club on March uh, 2015, re-elected in 2017, and re-elected now in 2021. Uh, during his career, because he is a pilot, uh, Jean-François, he travels all around the world on board packet and, and club-made cruise ship. And uh, after he joins uh, in 1999, uh, the Marseille Force pilot station of which is a general secretary for 2011-2015. As I said, is very involved with all the association and, uh, uh, and uh, the organization to promote uh, the port sector uh, in, the, um, in society. So for me, it's a real pleasure because uh, uh, it's a friend now. Uh, to introduce Jean-François for this webinar, and I would like to warmly thank him to, to be here. Uh, Jean-François, the floor is yours, and encore uh, en français, merci beaucoup d'avoir répondu présent à cette, uh, à cette invitation. 
unfortunately, I have a long career. <laughs> I prefer to have a short career, but now it's life. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Philippe. Then uh, oh, I just give you some information about this story because we restart in June, as Isabella, uh, Isabella Elisabetta said, it, it, it was a very big challenge because if you want to restart in, in Juliet, exactly the first of Juliet, you have to be, you have the green card from the French authorities, for example, in March or April. And in March or April, it was uh, our uh, four confinement, and uh, we have maybe something like 50,000 cases for a day of COVID, uh, maybe four or 500 people dying every day. And when you go, when you go in front, when we were in front of the French government, uh, asking for crews, asking, um, in, you can imagine uh, the step we have to do uh, because they have so much issues, you know, in the, at this moment. But but uh, we have a long, long partnership, especially with uh, Mignon Esquena in Paris and me in Marseille during all this repatriation in, in March of 2020. And we manage a lot of things all together. And we have this chance to have the, um, the we, everybody knows everybody, and we have a lot of connection at what we call the confidence. You know, was real, and we are, we work all gathered all together. We share a lot of things uh, officially and officially. There is some some moment very hard because some people um, were dying, some people, you know, when the ships arriving with a lot of cases of COVID from Costa MSC, there is not so much cases. In, in, in fact, there is no cases at this moment. But it, it, it was our history. After we have also this, um, this environmental challenge, at one moment we have 17, 7, 1, 7 ships. Uh, in lay down in Marseille. You can imagine what happened when you have a ship of 300 meters and we arrived in the highways. Uh, some some of you knows Marseille. You have only the view of the ships, and of course everybody. Um, there is a lot of manifestations, a lot of meetings, you know, against the cruise ships alongside the forest for days. But everybody forgets that there is some <laughs> humans being, you know, on board. Then it was al always balanced between this uh, all this uh, uh, pressure. But in fact, in March, it was okay, we have this green card and we restart, but it was very graduated. Then, and of course, the, the, the only one call from MSC, one call for Costa in the 1st of June, we, we restart, it was very graduated and, and only 50% maximum of the ship. And always step by step, you know, we, we, we have more and more flexibility on the terminal and we keep this uh, uh, bubbles excursion, of course, but it was so hard, you know, to convey, for example, even now, I will explain you what is our future, I hope, but if you are coming from Italy or Spain in France, and you are coming by train, by by the airport, or by by buses, or by your car. You just have your your green card when you want to make something. If you have the, this green card to go to the restaurant, to go, you can, you are completely free like the other French. And in fact, but if you are coming from a ship, you have to be tested. You have to be in a bubble excursion. You have to be etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, is that Elisabetta? You want to say something? No. I see you showing your, your fingers, but uh, it, it is difficult for us, you know, it's, it's also a, a, a big, uh, you know, commercial issue because you have a difference of treatment between the, all these stories, you know, there is the passengers of cruise and the, the other one. And then our future now, because it's not necessary to, to speak about the, what's happened, everybody knows, is to, to try to convey, you know, the, the French government to have the, the same treatment for the, 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 the cruise passengers and the crew, because uh, uh, also the crew was uh, uh, still on board. They have not the opportunity to go to the city. And we have still, for example, six ships, six ships between the, uh, in the locks or in lay down in Marseille with um, thousand and thousand crew. They cannot leave, you know, the ships. But, uh, the, uh, we have the good news two days ago, and now this uh, the sailors now can go on shore, and we hope that it will be the same also for the for the normal course for the, the sailors of the uh, of, of the cruise ship, and we hope so also at the beginning of November we will have you know we will cancel this bubble excursion because 
first is not the good news because I have a lot of uh, French passengers around me. They told me that we never be back in cruise, you know, for the moment because we are testing that you know, when we are arriving, we are tested in, in, the, in the middle of the cruise and we are so much, you know, uh, things uh, forbidden for us, you know, when we are when we are going in excursion, it's not possible. Then this is the first step we have is to between Spain, France, and Italy to have the same level, you know, in in this in this excursion uh, for the foreign because for the French, of course, it's uh, but the French for us it's just uh, the the head of lines, you know. But for the other for the other nationalities, we need to to have more flexibility. Of course, we have to respect, you know, the uh, everything, the mask when you need the mask, you know, the distance, etc., the green pass, but we have, we need the same treatment and the other tourists or, or simply, the, we will be said the, the French. And, 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 um, and of course, for, for us, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge because now after the September was very nice, was completely green in France. And now the, 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 the pandemia is around 6,000 for a day. And we have to convey again, you know, the, the, the French government that we have, the, we have this good news because the second topics on, on this subject is for the economy, because for the local economy today, we have, of course, the, the, the guides, they come back on, on the buses, but of course, it maybe it's only 20 or 25 persons, you know, about the normal economy because the, the people, they cannot go to the restaurant, they cannot go on the, uh, the cultural spaces, or they cannot go to the museum, they cannot go, you know, to, for, on, the, uh, on, the, on the stores. And, and for us, of course, we, we feel that in, in some part of Marseille, they, they always see the, the, this, this, uh, these people walking on the street in, without any economical es uh, effect, you know, and, and that with all the polemics we have, with the environmental aspect, with the, also the, the, the economic impact, we have to, uh, to cancel these uh, uh, this, uh, protocols, you know. Of course, we need protocols, but we need normal protocols, you know, balanced between economy and, uh, you know, sanitary uh, uh, responsibility. Well, it, it's what, what, what can I say now? It, it's very important because in France we have the problem also the, the other port. In Marseille we were very, very lucky because we have, uh, as is Elisabetta said, you know, we have all these French authorities, especially uh, the, 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 you know, the health authority in Marseille, they, they really support us because they know one thing, they know really one thing that the, 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 our company, especially we have MSC and um, MSC Brands and, and Costa is 80% of our call. They, they, the, 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 they, they saw that they are the, the best, best procedure in the world because they can compare with the ferries, of course, they can compare with the airport because they manage all the system and they realized after, you know, the, the restart and, and even before, that the, 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 this uh, international company, because it's always difficult to speak with people, you know, they're in Miami or in Genoa or something like this, but of, of, uh, we were lucky to have in France, you know, some correspondent like uh, Erminio, this is the, the president of Crayon France, and uh, of course, also in Messi, they are building all, you know that they are building all the ships in France, as in many, mainly in France, and then with all this connection, they realize and they go on the ships and they go and they went on the ships, you know, and they realize that these protocols, they, they were in the terminal, of course, in the ship, but even the terminal, they were very solid, they were very uh, virtuous, and then they open, but we have still uh, a, a, a strange treatment, you know, for example, for the crew. And then we have this good news, you no, know, but we have always, always to follow the train, you know, we are not treated like the other, the other markets of the tourists. And we, we have to realize that, but we have to fight because there is no reason. Because now we can enter in hotel in Marseille coming from America or somewhere in the world. No, they don't ask you anything. If you are coming by, you are in the, you know, on a cruise ship and you go in Marseille, you have to be in a bubble, you know, it's crazy. Then we have to, but it's the same in Italy or Spain. Then we have to change that. And I hope that in France, they will be agree for us. I, I, I think so, because you need to prepare now. 2022, uh, and uh, the, 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 the best we can do now to prepare is to have the, something between the, the ancient world, of course, and also uh, uh, 
uh, the, the, this, this pandemic is still in life, you know, then we have to balance between these two, uh, these two subjects. But I, I'm, I'm, very, uh, I'm very happy because, uh, of course, we have um, something like 200 school, you know, between the end of the year. It's less than our 500 school usually, but uh, it was nice. Then I think it's, it, I can speak half an hour if you want, one hour, but I think there is some people they want to speak or so. And just to say to you that uh, it was very important, especially a, a great, uh, uh, I'm so happy to work with Messi because a Messi starts in August 2020, you know, and we have 10 months already of uh, operating in, in Italy, especially. And it was maybe our first uh, stone, you know, to say, okay, you see, it's working well, very well in Italy. And of course, we can do the same in France. And then it was it was very very important for. Him. And I would say the same if he, if Isabelletta was not here today, <laughs> because he's a true only. And of course, we have a great job also with Costa. But especially, with Costa, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jean-Francois to us. It was, yeah, it was very interesting listening to all the challenges you went through. And uh, well, uh, is also being a port operator, I say, I, I was just remembering my memories, my bad memories, they say, and how it, difficult it was for cruise ports to get really prepared and accepted by authorities and also by cruise lines even. Well, um, I think, a, a port can, can, cannot come alive without a, a cruise ship calling the port. For cruise ports, the opportunity starts when a cruise line calls the port. And, uh, but before that, uh, the challenge was to convince the authorities to accept a cruise call. And that, that cruise phobia was among all these uh, countries, especially in the Mediterranean, was really uh, fighting ag against this anxiety of the uh, authorities of, of cruise calls. It was the same for Turkey. I mean, Turkey has received so far 25 million tourists, international tourists, and they were really treated very easily and simply when it, when it came to receive them by airplanes or by, by, by roads. But when it came to cruise lines, I mean, they had wide open eyes and everybody was so scared. I think that was because of the negative perception from the very beginning. Anyway, I mean, um, I would like to thank all our participants. I mean, it was such a perfect match. I mean, and I have to really relay my special thanks to MSC Cruises because it looks like uh, that cruise line touched all the ports and uh, brought some hope to, to, to the industry. Uh, I mean, it was the same for all other ports in the Mediterranean. Thank you for leading this initiative and giving us hopes for the future. Uh, and uh, just after a while, we will have our question and answer sessions. Please, Elisabeth. Just to say very quickly that I didn't mention a lot of other ports that uh, we normally call, uh, so that we're not new opportunities, but it's not a because they were not new ports. Sure, sure. I should thank them. Everybody did an incredible job. Everybody was supportive. Everybody showed the willingness to to restart. And of course, rem let's remember that the ports and operators like global ports are always like the, the, the ham and cheese in the sandwich, I say, between the cruise lines and of course the local communities, the health authorities, etc. So it's not an easy position. It is normally not an easy position in COVID times, even more difficult. So I didn't mention a lot of other ports that are normally on our itineraries that we kept having in our itineraries thanks to the great job that they did. So today I only mentioned new timers, first timers, and opportunities, but uh, we shouldn't forget those, please. Sorry. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Thank you for the contribution. Philip, um, anything to add? Philip, are you online? Perhaps not. I, uh, okay. yeah, sorry. Thank you, Aziz. I, I'm sorry because I, I have, a, uh, as I say, a very bad connection, and I have a, uh, a webinar with robot. You know, so you <laughs> you speak like a robot, and uh, it's very difficult for me to understand yeah. uh, you and uh, all the uh, the speakers. So I, I'm very sorry for that. So I have nothing to to add, especially at this time. Uh, I think uh, it's very important. Uh, to, to, to see and to understand 
for the future, how we will uh, uh, find the best solution to recover uh, uh, the, uh, the, the cruise uh, uh, activity and the cruise growth in our ports. And I think that Jean-Francois insists, uh, has insisted like, uh, on this, we need to be uh, homogeneous uh, between us and to have the same standards and the same methodologies, the same protocols to uh, go further all together. So I think it's very important to insist uh, on this uh, and to focus on this point uh, to uh, allow uh, 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 a sustainable and steady growth of the, uh, the cruise sector in MED, uh, because it's a very, very important sector for, for all of us. Uh, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Well, we have not much time left and uh, I'd like to reserve the time for, for uh, I'd like to invite comments, questions for our um, uh, distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, and uh, perhaps, uh, Emilia, you can lead this section. Uh, please, uh, you can use either the chat function or the reaction uh, feature and raise your hand. Uh, to take the floor. We haven't received any question in the chat function. Let's. No questions. Everything was clear. <laughs> well, so clear. Yeah. And, and, yeah, it was really crystal clear and uh, really not much to question. And uh, well, Thank you for all our speakers and all the participants of MedCruise and MedPorts. Uh, we had uh, three webinars uh, starting from uh, March on, in, on March, June, and this one, it was our last one. And we tried to cover the whole aspects of this COVID-19 crisis um, from, from, from every aspect. And I hope that we will, we will not have any other reason to talk about COVID-19 anymore. I hope it will end to talk about this crisis and pandemic, uh, but 2022 is very promising for all our ports and for all the cruise lines. Uh, we are all expecting a very powerful recovery. Uh, and I hope that uh, it will just, it will be left in the past as a bad memory and uh, we will just hope for better and better. Um, so thank you all again. And I think, we will take a family picture now. I will leave the floor to Anya, our uh, MedCruz Secretariat, and we will take a family picture, just a few pictures just to memorize this moment. Thank you all. You can uh, please open your cameras. Yes. Yeah, I open my camera. Yeah, you just should do also feel thank you like for to the see you all. Turn, off, turn on your yeah. cameras, yeah. please. And maybe, Philip, yeah, you can also just. For, like to thank just to you. say thank you for the Med Cruise Secretariat and the Med Port Secretariat to, for the organization of uh, these free webinars. It was a pleasure to, to work with you, Med Cruise, and I hope that uh, we could do that in the future uh, again. So thank you all of us. Okay, so let's take a picture. Give me a second until the chat is disappearing. Otherwise, somebody is not in the ah, now. Okay, so one, two, three, smile. One more. So one, two, smile, cheese. <laughs> there we go. So next week we will have a general assembly in Barcelona uh, as Met Cruz and. Uh, I'm so excited to meet all our members after such a long time in person. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to come together with all of you. And thank you for the Secretariat of both associations of making this webinars possible for us. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Great job. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, 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 thank you. Thanks everyone. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Nice bye. Thank you. See you in Barcelona. See you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Amelia. <laughs> Bye.